first want to thank our fans. Uh, it sure felt like more than, I don't know what the total number was, but felt like of a, a lot of fans out there. And I thought the, the crowd noise was helpful. Um, the temperature was certainly helpful. I know that was much cooler uh, than last week. The atmosphere was you know, a lot better. So um, I know our players enjoy that um, top 10 matchup and an opportunity to get better. I thought we showed improvement. Um, we left a lot of plays out there. Uh, I thought we played really hard defensively, but sloppy on third down. Uh, I thought offensively, when we play clean, meaning we don't have a busted assignment, a penalty, or somebody doesn't know what they're doing, we do well. But uh, we can go backwards as quick as we can go forwards offensively, and we probably left more out there. Uh, I thought it hurt both defenses not having the um, signal caller leader in the back end uh, with um, them losing uh, Smoke and us losing Richard. Uh, it affected both of us. But I did think we played really physical tonight. Um, and I think when you play Auburn, that's where it starts, is the line of scrimmage and physicality. And uh, if you can't run the ball and you, if somebody else can run the ball, it, it makes it easier to be successful. And I was really proud of Stetson and the way he handled things, uh, very composed. And he probably had some balls he wished he could have back. Uh, but he'll only get better, I hope, from here. And uh, he gives us uh, some continuity. And we'll continue to develop the other guys as well. Okay, we'll take uh, questions. I'm going to do two at a time, so if you're on deck, uh, be ready when the first one is over with. So let's start with uh, Anthony Dasher and then Seth Emerson. Hey, Coach. I wanted to ask you about uh, the uh, the goal line package using Jordan Davis and, and Jalen Carter. How long have you guys been working on that? And just obviously it was very effective for you guys tonight. Yeah, uh, Monken talked about, you know, the inability to travel a lot of guys in the NFL and they use defensive players for those packages. And uh, we certainly think that Jordan is a weapon in terms of his athleticism and his size. And uh, Jalen played a lot of that stuff in high school. He's a, a really talented uh, guy that's played some fullback and things. So we've had it in for a while and uh, thought we would use it when we needed to. I thought uh, Monken and the offensive staff did a good job developing that package. Kirby, uh, obviously, you brought in Jamie Newman, you brought in JT, you started Juwan last week, but you had Stetson kind of the whole time. Is, is he, like, surprising you? Is he making a believer of you? Yeah, I, he's not surprising me, no. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough situation where, you know, I, I can recall the day that we decided to, to offer him to take him back. And, uh, you know, we had to fight, scratch, and claw to get him to come back. And uh, I'm certainly glad we did. Um, it, was a, it was an interesting decision because we had an interesting dynamic on our team and we felt like what we knew of Stetson, he would be a uh, productive player and a good player. And Stetson's never lacked confidence in himself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. I want to temper that enthusiasm that he knows he's got to get better. Um, people around him played well, and that's important for Stetson. But he did a good job of understanding what we wanted to do in the game plan. And he executed that really well. So I was very proud of him. He studied really hard this week. You know, the cumulative effect of the number of reps he took last year, I don't think we can ever measure that. Uh, I think you have to take that into consideration when you're talking about JT, uh, Carson Beck, and Gwan, who are all talented in their own right. They're not players. But Stetson taking every single rep with the twos the entire year last year has an effect. And I know it's not the same offense, but it's the same defenses. You know, it's the same preparation. It's just a different word. Uh, and he did a good job of managing those things. And uh, we'll continue to develop him as well as the other guys. Let's go to Mark Weiser and then Jake Rowe. Kirby, you talked a lot about Auburn's wide receivers this week. Um, but even without Richard LeCount losing him in the first half, uh, you guys obviously limit them to uh, – no touchdowns and, uh, you know, not much uh, in the passing game. Um, just your thoughts on, on uh, how they, they held up the secondary. I thought they did a good job. I thought uh, we, we made some plays on 50-50 balls, and then we lost some 50-50 balls. But when you play against a quarterback like Bo and, and skill level like Seth and, uh, and Schwartz and some of those guys, it, it makes it tough because eventually you're going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what football boils down to is who can win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. And if you lose some of those, maybe the game's different. And uh, if you win more than you lose, you're usually going to come out ahead. And uh, Bo made some unbelievable throws and some unbelievable scrambles 
uh, to keep them alive. I thought he 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 did some really good things. Um, but I was proud of our secondary and the way they played. Uh, Kirby, when when you look at that game, I mean, I, I think James Cook came off with an injury. I'm not sure if uh, Warren McClendon did or not. But can you offer an update on those guys and and as well as Stetson? I know he kind of had a banged up hand or something like that. Yeah, I think all those guys are fine. Warren just cramped. Warren McClendon just cramped a little bit. He should be fine. I think James is fine. He probably could have came back in the game. And at the point that we didn't need him to, uh, uh, Ron said he wasn't going to bring him back, but he was ready to go the second half. Um, uh, and Stetson's fine. Go to Paul Newberry and Dean Lee. Uh, Coach, you say, you know, every obviously nobody has a, a locked up starting job. Does Stetson feel like, though, you're getting more and more comfortable with him? And like you said, you mentioned continuity, and he's been here for a few years and knows the offense. Uh, how how comfort, comfortable and confident are you in him, you know, holding this job for a while? Yeah, he continues to prepare the way he has and uh, execute the way he has and the offense functions around him. That's certainly the the plan. I mean, we think that uh, right now he's the guy and, and he's done a good job preparing. He did a good job preparing this week. He used the people around him. He understands what we're trying to do. Um, he's been uh, part of a very similar offense for uh, several years. Kirby, it seems uh, that Auburn just never could get rolling offensively. Did y'all, I mean, were you satisfied with how off kilter bow was most of the night and was that because of the blitzing or was that the other stuff y'all were showing you know i don't know i didn't think we finished well i thought we had uh i don't know i would be guessing four or five missed sacks uh just couldn't get him on the ground um i think that the credit to his athleticism because we got some pretty good athletes out there that couldn't get him on the ground um but i i, I was pleased with the uh, uh, the way we finished, obviously, with six points in the production, but we left a lot of third downs. You know, we, we don't usually give up a lot of third downs. We've been good on getting off the field on third down, and, you know, seven of uh, 16 is not our – we don't meet our goal. And so, uh, we, we know that, that that second – that drive – first drive of the second half was not uh, up to our standard. Let's go to Mike Griffith and then Chip Towers. Yeah, Kirby, can you give us some insight into, into what went on this week as far as getting your team focused and, and recalibrated? I know there was a lot of newness on that offense and some new staff members. How were you able to get this team settled down and, and focused like this this quickly for Auburn? We didn't do anything different than we did for Arkansas. I mean, we, we practiced on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We prepared. We went through our normal routine. Uh, I think they had one more game under their belt. That probably helped. Uh, we executed at a higher level, um, which we didn't do against Arkansas. Um, but they, we, 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 we didn't do anything else. It was not like a magic speech or a, a motivational uh, everybody. I mean, the, it wasn't there. We, we, the men in that room trust the men in that room, and they trust the coaches, and they listen to us. And we told them last week, it's never as good as it seems, and it's never as bad as it seems. But everybody now wants to make it really bad last week and really good now. And guess what? It's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, Kirby, how much do you attribute uh, uh, the, the good play of the offense to the offensive line in particular? It seemed like a much cleaner effort than, than a week ago. Well, I don't know. They were terrible last week, so something must have just happened. I mean, the Wizard of Oz came and saw them and – Gave them all courage and ability, and they they played better. They were the same guys, guys. I mean, they, 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 it's not any different. Uh, I tr I attribute it to the fact that we didn't have a ton of penalties, although we had too many, and uh, we didn't turn the ball over. It's not rocket science. Let's go to William Newland and then Brandon Sudge. Hey, coach. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you about uh, Kyrus Jackson. Obviously, he played well at Arkansas last week. Uh, but did you expect him to break out like he did tonight? And, and what's he been doing in practice, um, you know, in the offseason and in these last couple of weeks that's made him such a top producer this year? Kiers is one of our leaders. He's one of our toughest players. He's one of the most demanding guys of other people. Uh, he's a great academic student. He does what he's supposed to do when he's supposed to do it. Uh, and he deserved that game, you know, probably more than anybody. He made plays uh, and uh, did a great job of that. Um. Kirby, uh, following up on uh, Chip's question about the line, kind of following up on your response actually about the magic or Wizard of Oz or whatever you said there, um, is it the same type of thing um, with the um, offensive scheme and like opening things up? Was there any sort of like 
evolution that y'all saw over the last week? Were you getting comfortable with guys, or is it just the same? Were you going to – yeah. Yeah, it wasn't an evolution of the offense. It was uh, execution of the offense probably is a better word. Um, you know, I thought we had a good plan. I thought we had a good plan the week before. Plans didn't change. The execution did. Uh, and and I would be sitting here lying to you. You know, everybody wants to make it about, you know, coaching and scheme and play. It's not about that. It's about players and execution and moving people up front and being able to be uh, two-dimensional and not being one-dimensional. And if you can run the ball, then you're probably going to have success at throwing it. Let's go to uh, Jeff Schultz if you have a question, and then uh, Adam Rittenberg. Yeah, Kirby, just following up on the on the whole execution thing um, from early on, how much of it can just be attributed to last week was the first game? You didn't have a lot of, you know, practice time as much this this year. Uh, you know, you had a week to get under your belt. How much of last week and maybe people's perceptions being skewed, you know, or sort of changed by, by that? I don't think it was that because we, 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 we technically had more time to prepare for last week because it was like coming out of an off week, meaning we practiced for Arkansas more days than we did Auburn. You know, like Auburn was a short game week, so it was really Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where Arkansas we prepared in advance. Um, it really just boils down to uh, our ability to execute, not shoot ourselves in the foot. And look, we probably did execute better uh, last week when Stetson came in and people functioned around him. You know, if you remember, we had a little more success in the two-minute drive. We did some good things in the second half. Um, you know, I can't put a finger on exactly the difference. We were able to run the ball a little bit better. Hey, maybe Arkansas is better than people think. Somebody told me they won tonight. So, I mean, maybe they're pretty good. And maybe that has something to do with it. Kirby, every quarterback needs confidence, but is there something unique about Stetson and what he believes in himself, just given his story and what he's been through to this point? I think what's unique about Stetson is he, uh, you know, the guy handled everything the right way. You know, as, as coaches, we got to look ourselves in the face, and, and, and I'm charged with making decisions. And, you know, some people could probably argue that, that, that maybe we didn't make the right decision in the first game, and maybe he should have been the guy. You know, but not only was he not the guy, he wasn't, you know, he was not getting a lot of reps early in camp. And to his credit, the reps he got, he took a lot of value in. He was like a pro third string quarterback and he was back behind the huddle going through his steps. You know, he came and saw me a couple of times and, you know, wanted to know where he was and, and why he wasn't getting a lot of reps. And, you know, we, we talked endlessly about it from a staff, an offensive staff and, uh, it was not a, you know, it wasn't a clear cut deal. It wasn't like he wasn't the guy, but it wasn't like he was. Uh, all he did was, you know, a lot of scrimmages, he, he moved the ball with the threes. And um, it's hard to measure that because you can discount it to being with the threes. And he didn't get a lot of opportunities. And to be honest with you, he didn't cry, pout, leave, transfer, you know, do anything, have his parents call. He didn't do any of that. He just kept working and working and working. And then when he got an opportunity, he took advantage of it. But let's make no mistake about it. Stetson has to get better, and we have to get better. I have to get better. We have to get better as an organization to move on because we've got a gauntlet of a schedule. So he's not, you know, one of these kids that thinks he's arrived. He's going to be right back in there working, getting ready for the next game next week. So uh, Chuck Culpepper and then uh, Dennis Dodd, if you have a question. Dennis. To Dennis. Yeah. You ready? Oh, all right. Um, Kirby, I say this half facetiously, but when you got when you got Kirby, uh, Jamie to come in, uh, how high in your mind was that Stetson Bennett, you know, could be the guy that we could go with to win the East? Uh, you know, I I didn't know if Stetson would be the guy. I certainly uh, brought Jamie in with a thought that he was going to be the starter and that uh, he was going to be able to play. I'd be lying if I didn't think that. But we certainly didn't hand the job to Jamie either, you know, and we had a, a competition. But to be honest with you, Stetson didn't get a whole bunch of those reps in the competition. A lot of other guys did. Uh, and he he all he did was be patient, learn, take notes, and take advantage of his opportunities. So I wouldn't sit here and tell you that I knew it all the time. But – it wasn't something that we didn't consider and talk about because he certainly did well when he got his opportunities. Chuck Culpepper, do you have a question? Yes, Coach, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to ask you about the balance. You got to halftime with 158 
passing yards and 130 rushing, I think it was. I mean, that's as, about as close to ideal as it gets, right? Yeah, that's 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 good balance. I thought we were running the ball well early, and uh, that's hard to do in the SEC. And we controlled the line of scrimmage. I did not think that we handled the two-minute drive before the half very well, and that was disappointing because in the past we have done that really well. I thought we uh, didn't – we kind of mismanaged it, you know, and some of it was my fault, and uh, we got to do a better job of that. Got time for a couple more. Let's take uh, David Pascal and uh, maybe Mark Bradley. Do you have a question? Hey, Kirby, you know what this Auburn offense can do. It's it scored 40 points on you when you were at Alabama and, and a few years ago at Georgia. But this is four meetings now where you've held them to around an average of nine points. What is it about your defense that, that tends to play, that has played Auburn so well lately, including again tonight? Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I was – I got comfortable playing against Auburn with Gus at the helm. And I, and I say comfortable. I want, to, I, want you, I want to explain that. Comfortable that I felt like I knew what they were going to do because I have a strong, long history. He knows what we're going to do. So you can try to out-execute him. You can see things coming maybe before they come. Um, but that was it was different tonight because that's not – that's not old Auburn. Now, you may say the result was the same, but that's not Chad's running that offense. And um, they, they, they're doing different things. You know, they got receivers lining up all over the place. They're an empty moor. Um, you know, if anything, they're probably struggling to run the ball as well as they have in the past. And that might have something to do with, uh, with more than just their backs or Bo Nix. But that was not a traditional Auburn offense to me. It was different. And uh, you know, I, felt like it was, I felt like it was tough to defend. Mark Bradley, do you have one? I don't. Thank you. All right, got time for one more. Anybody, jump in. Hey, Kirby, this is Connor Riley here. Stetson getting his first start this week. Do you think that did anything for him in terms of, you know, either gave him more confidence or allowed him to play a little bit more free, given that it was his first career start for Georgia? I don't know. I think he, I think he gained confidence last week, obviously. But, you know, uh, let's say what it is. I mean, we were playing a top-10 team, and, and the, 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 the amount of magnitude to the game was probably larger. And I felt like he had a little anxiety early. He probably missed a couple throws. I've seen him make several of those throws that he ended up missing over the middle, and he'll, he'll get better and make those. Um, but he played well. He played really well. And I thought he gained confidence as he played.